What's up everyone and welcome back to Movie Race. slash fantasy slash coming of age series after a plethora of teasers and shots finally released and is all about Wednesday, the girl known for her black clothes and her iconic pigtails. However, despite the attention always centered on her, I am sure that there are some secrets that you want to uncover, which is why I am here today to tell you all about them and share with you some of the secrets that Wednesday tried to hide, both the character and the TV show. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Number 10. Pilgrims Thanks to her hatred of pilgrims, Wednesday in the first episode of the series becomes part of a brawl at a coffee shop. At the pilgrim-themed amusement park in Jericho, the series presents a direct reference to the beloved sequel Adam's Family Values, in which both Wednesday and Pugsley are sent to Camp Chippewa, and because of the reference toward that project, it is Wednesday that starts a fire and delivers an infamous monologue about the cruelty of the pilgrims. This could have all been kept a secret in order for the already confirmed second season to feature Pugsley as well, Wednesday's partner in crime, and him to be the one to explain why all the hatred toward the pilgrim in the second season. Who knows? We will have to wait and see for ourselves. Number 9. To Snap The secret society at the Nevermore Academy, the Nightshades, is a society that has been part of the Adams family for quite a while, with both Wednesday's mother and father also being part of it during their time at the academy. Among the many secrets behind the nightshades and their purpose, there is also the password that you learn when you become part of the society, which as you might all know by now is a magic sound. Two snaps one after the other in quick succession, and at the entrance is open the secret passageway, but enough about that, what about the two snap Maggie sound? Well, I am not sure that many of you know this, but the two snap is a very well done callback to the theme song of The Addams Family, which is featured throughout the song and became one of the most famous details from the fictional family's presence in media. Number 8. Gargoyles it was the production designer of the series, Mark Scruton, that hit that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in reality, it was Mark who dropped a massive hint toward the gargoyles at the Nevermore Academy Quad and why there are so many. He said that they are a fruit of the designers, with the idea behind them being that they represent the different groups within the school, which is why there are vampires, gorgons, and sirens too. But that is not all. Scruton also added, that there is a big plot point behind all of them, whatever that means because I have been searching throughout the first season what this could mean, but was unable to find any connection between them behind the numbers and how they are grouped, something that explained Scruton already, with the plot side of things probably coming throughout the second season, so keep an eye for those statues. Number 7. Pugsley The series, as the title suggests, is all about Wednesday Adams, the black-clothed, pigtailed demon, so to speak. However, the series did not fail to bring in the other members of the family such as Morticia, Gomez, Uncle Fester, and more importantly, Pugsley, for whom I secretly hoped that there will be more screen time in the second season. The introduction of the character in the series is presented similarly when compared to the original movie, tied up with red string, completely helpless, with an apple lodged in his mouth. Real fans will also notice that there was no arrow and a bow from Wednesday's side to shoot the apple in Pugsley's possession, a nod that something like that might happen the next time we see him in the series. Number 6. Edgar Allan Poe Edgar Allan Poe is a fictional alumnus of Nevermore Academy, and it shows, but not to the full extent, because despite him being so important for the school, there are some secrets about him that have been hidden throughout the series, which could potentially tell us more about the second season. With the secrets behind those details yet to be uncovered by none other than Wednesday. One interesting bit is the name of the boats and how their designs and names are a nod to Poe's short stories, which is why Enid and Wednesday's boat is named the Black Cat, Bianca's boat the Gold Bug, Xavier's boat is named the Amontillado, and the fourth team's boat named the Pit and the Pendulum, all of which could be hiding a detail or two for future reference moving forward. Number 5. Wednesday's Name 
Speaking of names and titles, Wednesday is a pretty unusual name, right? Well, the Adams family is an unusual bunch, and despite all that, the series never truly dig deep and told the history behind Wednesday's name. Cartoonist Charles Adams, the creator of the Adams family cartoons, said that he only gave his characters names after they became popular, and the thought process behind the girl's name came from one of his favorite nursery rhymes called Monday's Child. That dates back to the 1800s in which Wednesday's Child is full of woe, something the series alludes to over the course of the first season. Oh, and I almost forgot, you might have noticed all the ravens across the school. Well, they are yet another nod to one of Edgar Allan Poe's most notable poems, The Raven, that he published after he smashed the subscribe button and ranked the notification bell. But no, on the more serious side of things, a poem he published in 1845 around the same time when the first time the Adams Family made their debut. Number 4. Ignatius It I am more than sure that all of you who are fans of the series and the character surely recognized all the members of the family with one exception, a recurring supporting character that has been showcased on numerous occasions in the cartoons and the series, Wednesday's cousin Ignatius It. Well, I am here to tell you that a portrait could be seen of him in the basement of the Nightshades' meeting place, an original lineup member that is shown to be related to the family but doesn't appear to be human or a humanoid as a whole, with him entirely made of blonde hair. Wearing sunglasses and a bowler cap, a very mysterious member of the family that could appear in the second season as part of Wednesday's visions, and why a portrait of him is displayed at the Nevermore Academy, but only to those who are part of the secret society. Number 3. Miss Thornhill's Plants Outside of Miss Thornhill's red boots and their significance to Wednesday in determining who is Hyde's master at the end of the series, her collection of flowers is yet another mystery that has to be resolved. The flowers give clues to the evil ways of Miss Thornhill, who gives Wednesday a black dahlia, a symbol with two meanings, murder and betrayal, a gesture that foreshadows Miss Thornhill's true intentions, and the one scene in which she gives the Venus flytrap food is just another clever metaphor for her role in the Hyde attack and her relationship with Tyler. When Wednesday is expelled from the school, she receives a white oleander from Miss Thornhill, which according to her, represents renewal and destiny. But Wednesday knows that it is one of the most dangerous plants, as it is depicted by yet another connection between the plants and it suggesting Miss Thornhill's final plan and motives, something the series tried to hide and gave us the freedom to figure the entire thing out. Number 2. Lurch's Eye Color some fans also noticed a strange aspect in Lurch, Adams's butler, and that his eye color changed from when he first drove Wednesday and the gang to Nevermore, and the last time we saw him in the series. The thing that kept me up all night was the change of color in Lurch's eyes, which could be seen quite clearly. Now, it could be a filming mistake or something from the post-editing side of things, or get this, Lurch might very well be Weems, or another shapeshifter, since Weems supposedly perished at the hands of Miss. Thornhill and the lack of evidence and an official funeral are just two of the reasons upon which I can base my knowledge about this and say that Lurch could actually be Weems and her to come back in the second season simply because of just how impactful her character was. Number 1. The Showrunners Throughout the series, it is not a secret that there are a lot of secrets, easter eggs, hints towards something that is coming, and callbacks, especially the town of Jericho, which has a lot of secrets, including a blink and you will miss it moment that references the names of the showrunners in the town. Miles Miller and Alfred Goh's surnames are printed in Miller and Go on the window of Wednesday's therapy room. This is not really a secret because it has been revealed shortly after the first season dropped, so it is a rather great way to pay respect to the people working on the series, and a secret that now you know if you decide to watch the first season at least one more time, before the second season drops, something for you to look back for and then tell it to your friends as a brag. See you in the next video.